All right, neat. Thank you, everyone. So yeah, I'm Stuart Cow from Conservation Management um, uh, here with um, Cyrus. Um, we've been with CMP for a, for a little while and I've been hanging around the fringes of CMP and CCNet for a bit longer than that. Um, thanks very much for, for having us along to talk about Talk about this. Um, so basically, what I'm what I'm going to talk through today is we've been doing some work um, in supporting a program called Learning on Country. So country in this in the sort of Australian Indigenous context um, refers to sort of traditional places, um, and it's an all encompassing term relating to both people, place, knowledge, the the, you know, the, um, the things that are on those places and so on. So it's not just land, it's land, sea, water, plants, animals, people, and, and so on. So um, when if I'm referring to country as I talk, I'm not really talking about Australia or uh, uh, anything like that, um, because country will come up a fair bit. So we've been doing some work um, and I'll explain what learning and country is in a moment, uh, but supporting an education program. And I've brought some of the conservation standards tools into playing with that for reasons that I'll explain. So I just wanted to talk through what we've been up to and hopefully you'll find that interesting. I'll try and not talk so long that there are no question, there's no question time at the end. Uh, and perhaps if someone could just give me a nudge when you know 20 minutes have passed if I haven't drawn breath yet. I can um, do that for you. Awesome. Thank you very much. Um, so I just, I need to, I'm just a quick acknowledgement that, you know, we, we are very much a Johnny come lately in the learning on country space. Um, as you will hear, it's been operating for many, many years. Uh, we were asked to come and participate for the very specific purposes of developing a monitoring and evaluation framework for learning on country, but learning on country is really based on the communities in which it exists and local teams of people who are running it, an organisation called the Northern Land Council, um, who are a large Aboriginal uh, organisation in Northern Australia, and a number of researchers and so on, particularly um, Bill Fogarty. So they're really have built learning on country and uh, we've just sort of tacked on the end. So the, the where we're talking about is the north, northern, western and eastern Arnhem land in, in far northern Australia. Um, in And learning on country is in about 15 different um, communities. Uh, it's a program that's been built from the bottom up that is, it's emerged from the communities as a program for supporting um, uh, high school education, rather than a program that's been developed by government and others and come come down. Um, it's it's built around the idea that um, um, you're using the skills and knowledge of the community itself as a framework for for education, rather than imposing an external curriculum, pretty much just, um, I suppose, drawing on the assumption that perhaps what is useful for a high school child in Melbourne may not be quite as useful for a high school child in Gapawiak in Northern Arnhem Land. And so trying to integrate uh, better with Indigenous knowledge systems and so on. And I just want to, uh, it, it's about moving from the known to the unknown or strengths-based teaching, hence the title of the talk, strengths, a strengths-based approach. And that's in contrast to what's a very typical, what's called a deficit model of education, starting with, you don't know anything, I'm going to teach you something. Instead of starting from there, starting with, what do you know, let's build on that. And so it's it's very much focused on that. And in that way, I think it, it has really good parallels with conservation standards, which is also, in my, you know, it's an asset, conservation standards being an asset-based approach. What are the things we want and how do we build on them? Not, not um, you know, let's focus on all the problems. It, 
operates you know, using a few key principles. So um, absolutely um, the ownership and authority of, of Indigenous people. So learning on country programs, which are based in high schools, are run by local steering groups, uh, connected to local ranger or guardian programs. You might know them as in other places, uh, in Indigenous ranger programs and so on. Um, centralises this idea of intergenerational transmission of knowledge and the use of that knowledge in um, the context of education. But also we use this term two toolboxes. So it's not about eschewing Western knowledge systems, but you know, trying to strengthen um, the, the use of Indigenous knowledge with those Western knowledge systems. Um, and, you know, the critical lead that there needs to be some sort of M and E framework in order to to support it. So yeah, it's very much about you know the the classroom being the country. Um, so you know kids go to school and so on, but they also you know spend time out on country uh, with you know elders, rangers, and so on. Um, you know, learning are very critical in their context traditional skills and then bring <laughs> those yeah, skills, bring those skills and that knowledge back in first our presentation sir we go on the on the um could everybody please go on mute oh, my cramps are bad besides Stuart um all right so where why why did we get involved where did we come from What's um it? so for what? Um, for a long time, the the indicators um, that supported learning on country were very much driven by, in essence, funders, um, you know, funding these these education programs, and they're what you might call fairly typical indicators. Um, you know, retention, attendance, um, you know. Uh, attainment through um, you know, standardized testing and, and things like that, um, which is all very good for in, in the education context, but didn't reflect community goals and objectives in, in, in parallel to, but there's a much broader um, set of goals and objectives that the communities themselves had in supporting and building learning on country programs. Um, so basically this work is about creating a parallel set of KPIs that are more meaningful at the community scale um, than you know, ones that are meaningful at the institutional scale. But also we needed to be able to do it in such a way that you know, we're working across 15 different communities. And although you know, I've um, you know, lumped everybody into northern Arnhem land indigenous communities across those 15 different communities we, we're working in probably 15 languages um you know quite distinct ways parallel but distinct ways of looking at the world and, and so on so the, the framework needed to be able to talk to the local community but also be rolled up to be able to talk about a whole of program uh, set of um uh, indicators. So that's that, that's the sort of thing we're trying to do. Um, Learning on Country has been operating for, for 10 years um, and it was recognised that, that, you know, that was using these very standard indicators and so in, in 2015 or so this guy Bill um, Fogarty um, did some evaluation work, you know, looking at well how's the program going, what are some of the things that need to be done and, you know, it was clear that there are a lot more values that were driving participation and engagement than just these sort of people, you know, kids attending school and so on. So he did a lot of work with a number of researchers on trying to generate what are the values or targets in our language that communities are sort of working toward. Um, and that's really where we've been. We've sort of built off that work um, where he's generated those targets and we're now using those targets to establish the broader uh, M&E 
framework. And one thing I'd just as an observation as we go through, a lot of these um, communities have, as I say, ranger programs or guardian programs. They have uh, Indigenous protected areas. A number of them have done healthy country plans following conservation standards um, or you know, analogous processes. And so one of the reasons why we were asked to, to do this was because uh, it's a framework that people are familiar with. Uh, and so um, engaging in the idea of how do we set up monitoring and evaluation uh, in this context, we because learning on country is connected to ranger programs, having it um, thinking, you know, using similar set of tools makes it a bit easier for people to move backwards and forwards between, you know, thinking about these things for education, thinking about these things for country more broadly. So we've the work I'm talking about now is we've we've been running a pilot program um, to develop indicators and test them in three communities, Manangrida, Galawinku, and Lanapoi. And really I'm just going to talk about what we've what we've been up to. So firstly, these were the values or targets um, that uh, were developed, took about two years, um, many, many, many conversations with many communities. Um, and finally was they were endorsed by the by the steering committee um, in um, 2021 based on the work that uh, Bill did. Um, and you, you can see they they're not your typical targets um, you know fit fit probably more into the human well-being um, space, but things like language, culture, identity, intergenerational knowledge, some of them are process, but nevertheless, these are the things that people said, this is what we want to see. These are the values that drive community uh, in, in thinking about learning the country. Um, so what we had to do was come up with indicators that for those that were meaningful to many different decision makers, local community members, um, both formally involved in the program and informally involved in the program, uh, the you know learning on country program managers and funders. Um, we started down the idea of you know let's have an indicator and having worked in this space a bit that ultimately tends to not work terribly well and we end up working a lot with this idea of a kind of compound assessment where there's not an indicator there's an evaluation of a series of indicators based on an extensive traditional knowledge about whether something is or isn't healthy or, or viable. So rather than tell me about that, you know, um, whether that uh, you know, plant is healthy because it's got fruit on it, um, the assessment is much more sure, but the season's been like this and um, the fire regime around it's been like this. And so given all those contextual things, yes, that, that's okay. Um, uh, rather than trying to break it down into a sort of individual thing. Um, we wanted to focus on indicators most easily used at the sites, but that can be rolled up. And of course, self-evidently, it's a complex space. But it's, a, it's the intersection of a whole heap of different cultural perspectives, both the different cultures between different education departments, as well as the cultures between different organisations and the different communities. And so just trying to create a sort of negotiated space. Broad approach, fairly sort of obvious probably, you know, let's try and find some theme, let's try and figure out what's happening at the community level in a really detailed way. Let's try and identify some themes uh, across that and then let's bring that up a bit further and see if we can get some generalised themes and we're just going to take you through what we did to do that. Stuart, we're um, just so after 20, 20 after the hour, just a note on time. Okie dokie, yep, I'm, I'm, I'm going to flip through a few things now as we sort of get into the, the thank you. Um, so we basically did some workshops, you know, pulled it in, built some situation diagrams based on what people said, um, turned those into some results chains, and uh, we think we've identified some stuff that we're now uh, road testing. So I'm just going to take you through a bit of detail of that process. So the workshops, we built the road workshops around these four key elements of results change, but you know, the indicators of the values, 
what's kind of getting in the way of those the threats, obviously. Um, what are the strategies that people are putting in place and, you know, what are the signposts or the results that um, we can see along the way as the strategies um, play out. And the um, part of doing, you know, threats, signposts and strategies is also a way of triangulating the indicators because people talk about indicators in one way, but then when we start talking about the signposts, they talk about other types of indicators and so we can sort of cross-reference them. It's basically trying to set up some basic results change so that we can think about, well, this is telling us whether the values are changing, but also gives us an understanding of the sorts of things that communities might want to do in order to influence those. So we just spent a bunch of time in workshops, um, doing workshopping things, you know, creating vast sheets of sticky notes, which, you know, is, is a great joy and a passion, I'm sure, for everybody who's on the call today. Um, masses and masses of sticky notes. People really got into it. Um, it, it was, um, uh, yeah, incredibly interesting and um, uh, interesting conversations and, you know, people were incredibly hard to pull that together. Um, from there, it was all about, you know, analyzing that data and sort of grouping and aggregating and, you know, where are the common themes and, and what can we do? Um, so I'm going to do, sort of show you a couple of Marathi screenshots. This is where I say, as every good presentation should, I'm not expecting you to read the detail. I just want you to have a look at the broad theme um, um, because the writing is very small, um, but you know, whatever. So, I'm going to start at the end and then show you show you how we built it. Um, so the, the end point is is this, where for each of the values, in this case, the example is community control, that's the target. For each of those, we've identified what are the critical attributes. In this case, we've said for community control, the attribute or feature is governance and administration. And these are the indicators of that. So this is at the whole of program level. Um, and then what are the key challenges or threats? There are community issues and poor governance and administration. What are the key strategies that need to be put in place? Community engagement, governance and administration. And what are some of the changes along the way? And there's a lot of detailed text that sits under these boxes. But using Marathi, um, we use the, the sort of group boxes to create those higher, higher level themes. The important thing is we need to be able to map those also to the community scale. So for each community, what we were able to say, well, this is what community number one said about community control and development. Here are the individual threats. Here are the individual strategies. Here are the individual kind of roadmap things in community one. And hopefully you can see with the color scheme that for this community, some of their things overlap with the global program, and some of them are unique to that community. So what we're trying to do is say, well, each community can do its own monitoring and evaluation for its own things. At the same time, some of those things can be cut out and reported uh, more at the global scale. So community one looks like that. Community two looks quite different. You know, again, some overlap with their overarching things, but their own issues as well and community three different again. So when you put them all together, this is the whole shoot and match, um, but then you can say, well, where are the common things? And that's what this is all about. So back to that sort of first diagram. So take all that information from each of the community sessions, generate some basic results chains, identify the common themes, and then try and construct a, an, an overarching one. Um, how do we get from one to the other? Just did some basic kind of frequency plotting and stuff like that. You know, how many times did different things come up? How often? What? You know, which community said what? And you know, trying to find the things that were most commonly talked about in most places. Um, so what we're doing now is we're going back. So we did that last year. Um, did all the analysis, and now we're going back to those same communities to now um, ground truth or do the proof of concept, you know, 
So we got all that information from you. Have we picked the right indicators that you can use? How are we going to collect that? What do you think about the health today? What, let's, let's now start setting some baselines. Again, um, caveat about they need to read all the stuff. But basically what we, we're we now doing is saying, okay, we've got for the, the value of being on country, a key theme is cultural recognition. There are some indicator topics. We think the indicator for these is largely going to be elder satisfaction because how do you, you know, how do you best measure whether cultural protocols are being followed? Well, you're not going to get people to sit down and take a test. It's going to be when elders go with kids out on country, are particular practices being followed, welcomed by country, calling out to ancestors, permissions being given, and so on. So we have those things that came from the workshop in the top table. And what we've done is sort of turn those into questions in the, in the bottom table. Um, because I'm me and we are us, we've sort of suggested some alternative wording for the various levels of what do these things mean, because sometimes satisfaction doesn't mean as much, uh, it isn't quite as clear as it should be. So poor, fair, good, and very good. How we interpreted that in this context, it's not spot on for for you know uh, viability, but it works in this in this kind of context. And we also talk to people about well, how do we visually represent that? Because sort of smiley faces or thumbs up, thumbs down has proven to be quite problematic in the past. And uh, for a number of communities, they've really found this um, the visualization of the you know supporting a the growth of something is, is um, being really useful. So poor, it's a seed. If you don't tend it, it dies. Nothing grows from it. It's finished, you know, all the way through. It's a very good, you know, yeah, it's well tended. It's well looked after. It's generating what it should. It's providing all its benefits and so on. And so visually that kind of makes, that makes sense. So we're now using that as a way of asking groups uh, to sort of visualize, okay, you've got your value, here are the indicators. Where do you think you are? You know, with this sort of stuff. So we're kind of going through that field testing at the minute, and seems to be working, uh, working pretty well. And you know, we're getting some good consistency um, in terms of attributes indicators for the values. So we're hoping that by the end of this year, we'll be able to produce our first um, first report for the pilot sites in terms of the status of their values. Um, based on the indicators that have been generated, which which will be really exciting. Um, my last slide. Um, so there's been a few bonus things that have come out of this. Um, so one is that actually most of the, well, all of the learning on country places hadn't yet generated a strategic plan. They've just been doing it, which is great and fine and it's been reasonably successful. But by putting in place the MERI framework, People have now seen, oh, we can actually use that to do our planning stuff. So we've kind of come the other way around, which is fantastic. So, so now teams are actually using this material to start doing their forward planning as well as understand, you know, how things are going. Uh, so it's providing a number of additional benefits um, to the community that we're working with. And everyone seems pretty happy about it, which is which is great. Um, yeah, so that's kind of where we're up to. And I think I can stop sharing. Thanks, everyone. I hope that made sense. Thank you, Stuart. Does anybody have any questions? Uh, not a question, just just a comment that, Stuart, that was a very cool example of how to use the standards in a complex situation in multiple communities with different agendas. Wow, that that, that was really good. <laughs>